Okay, good morning everyone. Um, good to see some of you join class. We we'll wait for the others to join in. So how was your weekend, all of you? We have a good weekend. Yeah, thank God. Okay, what about the others? Okay, thank you, Jeffina. Jeffina says it was great by his grace, ma'am. Good. The others had a good weekend, busy weekend. Ma'am, the weekend well, well, went well with Sunday service and all. Good, thank you. So do you uh, uh, do you serve at church typically on Sundays? Ma'am, my father is a pastor. Oh, that's nice. So what is your role in church? Ma'am, my work is media and translating. My father preaches in English. I translated it in Hindi. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's uh, begin with the word of prayer. Um, can I ask Jeffina to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the amazing class that we are about to have. God, we invite the Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us to learn about you more and more. We are focusing on Christ the Lord Jesus. Let our mind be bigger about Christ. Let us understand Christ, why he came and everything. And let us preach the gospel boldly. Be with us and guide us. Open the eyes of our hearts so that we can understand the deepest meaning in the Bible. In Jesus' name, okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jekina. Uh So what was the... A uh, lesson we looked at, the last lesson we looked at in, uh, last Monday. Anyone remembers? What was the title of the lesson? Anyone remembers? The last lesson that we did. Yes, Lubega, go ahead. Zillo Tori says the virginal conception. Okay, thank you. Yes, Lubega, you had your hand up. Thank you, Anita, the sinless lamb. Yes. So what did we look at uh, in the sinless lamb? What did we learn about the sinless lamb? Who is the sinless lamb? Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, Jesus, yes. So what did we learn about Jesus being a sinless lamb? We looked at uh, Jesus' uh, title and role as the sinless lamb of God. So uh, to understand this title and this role, uh, what what did we basically look at? What did we look at to understand Jesus as the sinless lamb of God? We looked at the Old Testament uh, sacrifices that were made, right? 
and uh, we saw how Jesus came to uh, fulfill that. He was uh, uh, a type and the shadow of um, some of the Old Testament sacrifices that God had instituted uh, for the Israelites, and we read about this in the Old Testament. Uh, so what is the first sacrifice that we looked at? What was the very first sacrifice that God had told uh, the Israelites to do for generations to come? This was while they were in Egypt. So what is the first sacrifice? The Passover lamb. Yes, uh, the Passover. So uh, what they celebrated in Egypt. And uh, God told them that they had to uh, celebrate uh, this feast of the Passover for generations to um, come. So we saw that... Uh, uh, this Old Testament feast of the uh, Pass Passover is a type and shadow of the redemptive work of Christ in the New Testament. That means this Passover feast that was uh, instituted by God was pointing to uh, the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. It was kind of a type and shadow of what uh, Jesus would come to fulfill and be uh, the Passover lamb. So how was Jesus the Passover lamb? How was Jesus the Passover lamb? Because Jesus was perfect, complete, spotless, and he was full. So he is the perfect Passover lamb. Thank you. Uh, uh, the, the Passover feast, they had to choose a lamb that was uh, a male lamb, a year old, and it had to be without any blemish, uh, no sickness, no frailties. Uh, no injuries um, and a perfect lamb. And we see that Jesus was the perfect uh, Passover uh, lamb. He made the perfect sacrifice. And also he was somebody who, you know, um, made the sacrifice so that we can pass over from uh, death, eternal death to eternal life, uh, pass over from sins to be made uh, righteous and justified in God's sight. Uh, uh, we pass over from actually being uh, uh, enemies of God to being friends of God. Okay, and so God, uh, Jesus Christ, what uh, He did on the cross, the sacrifice that He made, the redemptive uh, work of uh, His sacrifice on the cross, you know, brought about our redemption, brought about our reconciliation, brought about our justification, and also our sanctification. We are being made. Um, um, uh, without any spot, blemish, that we can be presented without any fault or blemish or, uh, you know, spot before the Most High God, okay? And then what is the other sacrifice that we look at after the Passover? Uh, lamb sacrifice, what else, what other uh, sacrifice of the Old Testament that we had we had to look, uh, look at? Was something that they had to do daily, two times a day. So, what was the sacrifice? The morning and the evening sacrifice. Yes, the morning and the evening sacrifice that they had to do uh, daily. Okay, so why did why did God require them to do this morning and evening sacrifice daily? Why did he have to uh, ask them to do it then? Uh, it was a mean of atonement. Yes, an atonement for their sins because uh, they would sin daily and, uh, you know, God was, his very presence was there with them. He would come to speak to them and hence, uh, you know, they had to make atonement for their sins. And also what it did signify, the morning and evening sacrifice. It was not just atonement for sin because it was not just an uh, animal sacrifice, but they also had to make some grain sacrifice which was without any blood. 
So what did that signify? It signified total consecration. Right? They were consecrated totally to God. Uh, like it was also the, uh, you know, the, they, they would offer the sacrifices, the first fruits. So it was not just daily sacrifice, but it was totally giving their whole self and everything that they owed to um, God. And we see that uh, Jesus did not have to make uh, a sacrifice every day with this uh, you know, he uh, offered himself as a sacrifice for sins forever. And he did this once for all. Uh, and the reason he could do this was because he was holy, blameless, undefiled, and uh, separate from all sinners. He was sinless. And uh, by offering himself up as a perfect sacrifice once for all, uh, he put an end to the daily sacrifices. Hence, we don't have to make any daily sacrifices. And we also see that, you know, Christ was one with the Father um, and he was totally uh, surrendered, he was fully surrendered and totally consecrated. So he was the perfect sacrifice. He made the atonement for our sins and because he was one with the Father, he was fully surrendered and uh, totally consecrated. Uh, we see that, uh, you know, his sacrifice was well pleasing in God's sight and it made an atonement of uh, uh, a total and a final atonement for the sins of the whole mankind. Okay. Then we looked at um, uh, scriptures also talk about uh, Jesus Christ as a suffering lamb. Uh, we looked at in Isaiah, we saw how he was uh, oppressed and afflicted. And when he was reviled, that means when he was criticized you know, strongly and uh, you know, he was uh, spoken of very, through very rudely or unpleasant things were said about him. We see that he did not revile in, uh, in return. Uh, so it shows us how Christ willingly and very passively bore the penalty for our uh, sins. Okay, uh, He fulfilled the Father's plan. He accomplished it. And so we see that Christ became the suffering uh, Lamb of God. Uh, so that he could make his life as an offering uh, for our sins. And we also look at uh, another last offering. What was it? Anyone remember? Before we ended class, we looked at another offering in the Old Testament. And what is that offering called? The Lamb of Revelation. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, you know... Uh, uh, like not a sacrifice, but another sacrifice that God had instituted in the Old Testament that we had seen. Starts with T. Anyone remembers? Trespass offering. Thank you, Zinatoli. Uh, trespass offering and uh, uh, a trespass offering is also called as a guilt offering. And so we see that, uh, you know, people who, uh, you know, injured or hurt or, uh, uh, you know, uh, did something to, uh, you know, hurt somebody else, they had to make the restitution. And how did they have to make the restitution? They had to make, offer a sacrifice to God, an animal sacrifice. And they also had to pay back or give back the person whom they had wronged, uh, whom they had hurt. They had to give back exactly what uh, they had taken from them and they had to give one-fifth. Apart from that, they had to give them one-fifth. So it was 120% that they had to pay back to the person and they also had to uh, make a sacrifice to uh, God. So we see that uh, Jesus also was our trespass offering. Um, trespass offering means guilt offering. Uh, we stand guilty before God. Um, We've broken his heart and gone against him. Uh, and uh, so, you know, Jesus made that offering. And so we no longer uh, guilty or stand guilty uh, before him. We are redeemed, reconciled uh, to God, reconciled back to God. So that is what we look at uh, Christ's uh, role and title, title and role of him being uh, the sinless lamb of God. Okay. We'll move on to chapter 10 where we're looking at his substitutionary uh, suffering. Uh, what do we understand by this word 
substitutionary and what do we understand by or what do you understand by substitutionary suffering? What's meaning of substitution? Have you heard that word before, substitutionary? What does it mean? Someone or something in the place of. Yes, thank you, Rubega. Someone or something in the place of someone else. Okay. Taking the place of someone else. So the meaning of substitution is uh, the act, the process, or the result of substituting one thing for another. Uh, it can be a thing or a person substitute, substitution or substituting for somebody else in their uh, place. Uh, what do we understand by uh, this uh, role of Christ as the substitutionary suffering? The title of our lesson is His Substitutionary Suffering. So what do we understand by this? Um, Christ was sacrificed where we have, should have been his sacrifice. So he's a substitution for, our, for us. Thank you, Jetina. So, uh, you know, Christ took our place. We had to die. He took uh, our place. Uh, we had to bear the penalty for our sins, but he bore it uh, upon himself. Uh, we were uh, to be guilty and, uh, uh, you know, uh, punished um, and uh, ashamed in front of God, but he took upon himself our guilt, our shame, our pain, our suffering, uh, and he stood in our Yes. Okay. So in discussing uh, Christ's suffering, we will be focusing on his substitutionary work on the cross. Uh, we know that Christ was made a curse for us. Uh, he bore our sins. Uh, he bore our grief, our sorrows. Uh, he carried our sorrows. Uh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And uh, he tasted a death for every man. Okay. Uh, we're not talking about uh, the, the temporary death that we all die, but we're talking about the eternal death that we will all die because of the consequences of our uh, sin. And Christ took our place. He, was, he took it on behalf of us in our place. He bore our grief, our sorrows, um, our um, curse. Our, um, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and he tasted death for every man. So Christ was taking our place, uh, doing what we should have done, uh, bearing uh, the sins or the pain or the suffering, the death that we should have borne. Uh, he took upon himself uh, the suffering that we had to suffer and uh, he paid for uh, uh, our sins uh, for which we were required to pay, uh, but he paid it all for us. So the primary aspect of uh, substitutionary sacrifice is that the one uh, making the sacrifice, you know, fully identified with the one he was he's making it for. So Jesus, in our place, um, you know, he fully identified uh, with us. Okay, of course, he identified with us as uh, as a man uh, with the, or a human being. Uh, and he understood the weaknesses, the frailties, our temptations, uh, but uh, he was unlike other human beings, he was sinless. Uh, but when the sins of the world was taken upon us, he identified uh, with us even at, uh, 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 in that, at that point when he took on the sins of the entire mankind. So when he took upon our sins, he was able to um, and make the full uh, sacrifice for our sins. He fully identified uh, with each one of us uh, on behalf of whom he was making uh, the sacrifice, on behalf of whom he was paying or making the atonement for our sins or uh, taking the penalty for our uh, sins. Okay. The other uh, primary aspect of this substitutionary sacrifice is uh, Jesus uh, who made the sacrifice on behalf of us, you know, he suffered with our uh, adversities, 
uh, our sorrows, our pain, our curse, our sicknesses, he bore it upon himself. And he took upon our burdens, he took upon the evil that was upon us, he took it upon himself and he bore it all for us. Okay? So, um, we see that on the cross, you know, um, uh, Jesus bore everything, our sicknesses, our pain, our shame, our sins, uh, our trespasses, uh, uh, he bore it all for us, he did it all for us. So, can one of you please read Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 to 6, please? Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 to 6. Isaiah 53, 4 to 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, the, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep has gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. To his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity for us all. Thank you, Zilutori. So here in this passage from Isaiah chapter 53, uh, we see that, you know, um, uh, if you look at these different phrases, it shows that, you know, Christ uh, did, uh, or he, he, he um, he bore the sacrifice on the uh, cross, so he took upon our sins, he did it all for us, okay? Uh, we see uh, a few of these phrases here, he bore our grief, he carried our sorrows, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the punishment that needed to obtain our peace was upon him, uh, his stripes provided our healing, and the Lord laid on him all our iniquity. So we see that uh, in this, uh, in this, in these verses in Isaiah chapter fifty-three, if you notice that everything Jesus did was done on our behalf, and this was the substitutionary suffering that he went through or he bore on behalf of us on the cross. Okay. So the word bore here is a uh, bone here is. Uh, Nasa in Hebrew, it means to convey, uh, to remove to a distance um, or to lift, to take away or to cast away. So we see that uh, he bore our grief, that means uh, he totally removed it, he distanced it away from us, he just lifted it up away from us, he took it away, he cast it away from us, okay? So uh, we can also see the different things that Jesus bore for us here in this verse. What are the different things that uh, that Jesus bore for us on the cross? From this verse? From Isaiah chapter 53, what are the different things that uh, Jesus bore for us on the cross? What did he bear for us on the cross? Our sin, our sickness. Okay, thank you. What else? What are our things that he Our sufferings. Our sufferings, okay. Our pain. Our pain. Anything else? Uh, transgressions and iniquities. Our transgressions and our iniquities, yes. Punishment uh, so for he, our peace. Yes, he took upon himself uh, uh, our punishment for our, and so that we can obtain peace. Yes. So we see that the different thing that Jesus bore on the cross, or he uh, took away, or he cast away, he lifted away uh, these things from us out of grief our sorrows, our transgressions, our iniquities, and our chastisement, that is our punishment, okay? And uh, even our sicknesses, our curse, 
uh, everything he uh, he took upon himself, he bore it upon himself, uh, which means he just lifted it away from us, he cast it away from us, uh, he removed it out from a distance in its no way uh, near us. Okay. Now the Greek word for grief is holy, which means um, uh, sickness. And the word sorrows means maku, which in Hebrew means uh, is uh, the, the Hebrew word for uh, sorrows is maku, and it means pain. Okay, so Jesus bore all of this on the cross, and not just that he took upon himself our sin, but he also took upon himself our, our sicknesses, our grief, our sorrows, our shame, our curse, our pain our inequities and our uh, chastisement, that is our punishment. So, um, you know, uh, if sometimes we live with pain, whether it is a physical pain in our body or whether it's mental, uh, emotional pain, um, whether it is sickness or any sorrow or grief, uh, you know, and you think sometimes that nobody understands, uh, nobody knows what we are going through, um, or nobody is going through what we are going through, but uh, there is one who has already gone through uh, 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 and taken upon himself all of these things that you and I will be suffering with or will suffer in the future. And we know that we have one who identifies with us, and that is Jesus Christ. He knows uh, what we are going through, and that is why God became man. Um, not just so that we could pay uh, the penalty for our sins, but also God could understand our frailties, and that is why these are great interceding high priests who intercedes on behalf of us. Um, you know, uh, who understands our weaknesses, and it also says that you know when we are tempted, He knows, He understands, and He comes on behalf of us. He aids us. He comes alongside us. He helps us. Uh, he knows our frailties. He knows our um, weaknesses. So, you know, we have this God who's not just uh, somebody who's planned things, who's authored things for us, but has a plan and purpose and, uh, you know, and a final destiny for us. But it's a God who is, uh, uh, who, um, you know, is involved in our every minute, our every hour, uh, uh, every day. Uh, you know, things that we go through, uh, every aspect of our life, every area of our life, he knows. Um, and so we have this uh, God, this great interceding high priest, this uh, friend uh, who understands us, who knows us, and who's there to um, help us. Okay. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, uh, the young translation says, Surely our sicknesses he had borne, and our pains he had carry them. Uh, the same uh, verse, uh, the Lord's friends, uh, translation says that surely our sicknesses he carried, and as for our pains, he bear the burden of them. Okay, so we know that Jesus has taken all of our sicknesses, all of our pain, our sorrows, our grief. Um, so, you know, we don't have to live with those sicknesses. It's something that we uh, you know, refuse, we nullify, uh, we cast out uh, because Jesus has already taken upon himself our sicknesses and our pain and he has purchased our healing. So what we need to do is we need to believe that, uh, we need to stand firm on um, and declare uh, what he has done and finished on the cross and we need to, uh, you know, receive it by faith um, and the present till we receive our final and our full and our complete um, healing. And uh, he's a God who's true to his word uh, when we declare uh, his promises on healing. Uh, you know, we can receive healing in our body. We can see um, uh, the supernatural work in our uh, natural because this is what he has accomplished on the cross. And uh, these are the things that he has done. And it's not something that uh, is just there to be in letter in the word of God. But it's something that we need to agree on. We need to stand on. We need to believe for our own lives. We need to accept it. And something that we need to walk in. 
okay and then you can see uh, the supernatural in your natural world you can uh, really experience and uh, 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 and uh, taste the full benefits of the cross of what Jesus has done on the cross for us uh, you can enjoy that uh, you can receive it for yourselves and also you can give it to uh, others so it's not that we have to continue living with some of our terminal sicknesses and illnesses and pain and grief and sorrow of uh, losing our loved ones but something that Jesus has already taken on the cross and something that we can set, be set free from otherwise these things become a stronghold and a bondage and um, uh, you know once it's a stronghold and a bondage it's so difficult for us to uh, come out of that. Uh, so the important thing is, uh, you know, to know the truths in God's word, uh, to know our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. Uh, it's also important to know what Christ has really accomplished for us on the cross. And it's not something that is um, just a work, but it's something that uh, Jesus has offered himself. Just like when we worship, he extends uh, all of himself uh, I'm not just talking about corporate worship, I'm talking about it within our personal times. You know, when we are in the presence of God, God extends all of himself to us, all of his nature, all of his goodness, all of who he is, he extends. So we can participate in the divine nature, so that we can enjoy um, all of who he is. In the same way, uh, when we, part, uh, when we uh, you know, uh, Think about the finished work of the cross. It's not something that we just think about it when we take partake in communion. It's not something that we just think about it on Good Friday um, or on Easter or during the Lent season. I know some of you are, are you know, part of the traditional church where we go through the Lent season where you think you can focus upon the cross. But I think the cross is something that we can... Uh, and the benefits of the cross is something that we can appropriate every minute of our uh, life. Just keep declaring it over your life. Say, God, uh, you know, this is what a doctor said, or this is uh, what I've been suffering since childhood, but you've already taken this upon yourself, and I'm just um, cancelling this in my body, just nullifying this. Uh, this is not your work. You've already uh, borne my sicknesses so that I can be healed, and I just declare, and I'm walking on healing. And we need to believe that, uh, receive that by faith. And, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, that's when um, Christ's um, work on the cross, of what he has done for us, will become a reality, will become something that uh, uh, we can really taste and see that the Lord is really good. Okay? So the Bible teaches us that uh, Jesus, in his substitutionary work on the, uh, on the cross, bore our sicknesses and our pain, that is, all our physical ailments. Uh, he took upon himself our sins, our punishment. Um, and since Jesus took all of, all of this upon himself, and he carried them away from us, he cast it away from us. Uh, I like this word, cast it away from us. You know, it's just like taking it and throwing it somewhere else. So it does not no longer belongs to you. That sickness, that pain, that grief, that sorrow, that brokenness, that heartbreak, it does not belong to you anymore because God has already cast it away. It depends upon us whether we are willing to let go of it. Right? It is sometimes we get so used to living with some of our terminal sicknesses, uh, with our grief, with our uh, brokenness, with our pain, uh, the shame that we have faced. Um, it kind of uh, becomes a baggage that we carry and we've got comfortable carrying it. Uh, but it's something that we need to cast away. We need to get let go. We need to give up. This crisis cast it away from us and uh, we need to let go. I, I don't know if you remember this uh, chorus, cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. Uh, it's like just taking it and, uh, you know, casting and throwing it away uh, from uh, 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 I think it should be done something that should be done mentally, emotionally, because Christ is already done for us. But we need to let go, we need to cast it away from our um, lives. Okay? So therefore, what he bore, we need not bear any longer. Okay? And what he carried, we need not carry um, uh, on ourselves anymore. 
I just want to, to give this, uh, you know, a, a couple of minutes to each one of you. I don't know if you have a pen or a paper in front of you or uh, you have your uh, uh, gadget, you can just open a notepad and just type there or just write down, uh, you know, what are some of your griefs or your brokenness, your pain, um, the shame that you've been carrying all this time. Physical sicknesses that you've been, uh, you know, uh, uh, dealing with or living with and accepting, and you've just been on medications, and you know, it's like a terminal thing. But, uh, you know, even as you write it down, you can just say, God, you have cast all of this away from me. Uh, and what I need to do today is I need to just let go of all of these things which I'm just holding on to. Um, and you to take upon yourself, you gave your very life, uh, you were separated from the Father, um, you were sinless, but you took upon my sins, which were so detestable in your sight. You took all of my pain, my shame, my suffering, my grief, my sickness, and uh, even as you've done that, so that I can live in freedom, God, I've been just carrying all of these baggages, and I just want to, you know, let go today. So again, is it okay if you do that now, all of you? Yes, no? No answers? Is it okay if you do that now? Hello class, I am uh, uh, not getting any answers from you. Okay. Yeah, so, so those of you who want to do that, uh, we'll just take a couple of minutes and uh, we can do it. Those of you who say that, you know, I've already done that, I'm not holding any baggages, it's fine, you just take to the others. So you can take a piece of paper or you can just type it down in a notepad on your gadget. Some of the terminal sicknesses, illnesses, pain, grief, brokenness, shame, guilt. You've written it down, uh, you could just, uh, you know, just close your eyes and just say a word of prayer and say, God, uh, you can name all of that you've written on a sheet of paper, all of that that you thought. You can just say, God, this one even is, uh, it reminded me that you've taken all of this upon yourself, you poured all of this upon yourself, so that I can live in freedom. I can be liberated. I can um, experience the eternal life here and now. You can say, God, all of these things are like a big baggage of hindrance, emotionally, mentally, physically. And you can say, God, I'm just laying it all down and just casting it away. And even as you do that, you can just say, God, I open my life to finish work of the cross and receive your healing and receive the freedom. The joy and the peace, the shalom that you offered 
on the cross for me. Jesus, uh, this morning we are just so filled with gratitude and thanksgiving and praise for all that you have done and accomplished for us on the cross. Thank you that when you died on the cross for us and when you bore our sicknesses, our guilt, our shame, our pain, our sorrows, our transgressions, our inequities, God, you thought about each one of us. Even before you existed, God, you thought about us. How great is your love. We thank you that uh, we could just take time to pause. Even as we are studying your work on the cross, the substitutionary work, and the suffering that you went through on the cross, that we could pause, God, from just this mere academic exercise of going through what you have done for us, but just looking at it in a more personal, a much more deeper way, with a sense of gratitude, uh, with a sense of uh, joy, with a sense of uh, great thankfulness, God. We just thank you, Father, for, for liberating us, for granting us freedom, uh, so that we can enjoy the full benefits of the eternal life here and now in the present, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for making the full, sufficient, perfect sacrifice. We thank you that you suffered on our behalf. You know what it is when we go through pain and sorrow and grief and loneliness and brokenness, God. Even as some of us here uh, uh, are going through deep brokenness in our hearts, loneliness and, and uh, depression and uh, uh, grief with losing our loved ones. Some of us are even suffering with the physical ailments. We thank you that even as you bore it on the cross, we declare the full benefits, the finished work of the cross in each one's life, each one's body. We pray that they would just receive it by faith and they would, they would be activated in their lives, God, and they would just experience, experience your uh, divine uh, uh, grace, your divine favor, your divine goodness, your uh, divine healing will just flow through their bodies. You break every stronghold in the mighty name of Jesus. We set each one of us free, God. We receive that we come to a place where we can exchange, God, everything that uh, our burdens that we carry, we can exchange it for all of your goodness, for all of your love, for all of your healing of all of your uh, freedom, Father. We just receive it and we pray that we will continue to live, God, mindful of what you have done on the cross, mindful that we are set free, mindful that uh, we are your children, God, mindful that we are healed and whole, Father. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for um, uh, doing that. I hope uh, I can even take time, um, you know, in your personal time just to reflect, think about what we have done. Uh, and if things just pop up in your life, you know, just believe that it's already done for on the cross and just receive that and uh, walk in freedom. Uh, 
what the blessings that Jesus has uh, uh, received for you on the cross and given to you free. Okay. Uh, the second thing is that, uh, you know, uh, his uh, Christ substitutionary something on the cross, he did it for us out of, uh, what was the reason why Christ did all this for us? Was it because he wanted to uh, win over the devil? Uh, he wanted to put him down. He wanted to show how powerful and mighty he is, God is. What was the reason why Jesus did it all for us on the cross? It was the will of his father. Thank you. Uh, it was the will of your father. So what was the will of the father? Why did the father want this to be done? So, so that we cannot die from the sins committed by Adam that we inherited. Okay. Thank you, Isaac. What was the main motive or the reason behind what God the Father had planned and what Jesus had accomplished on the cross? Because God so loved the world. Thank you, Zinutoni, because God so loved the world. It was out of love. Okay, so uh, I think somebody had posted a question in the other class, you know, um, why, or if, you know, God is loving, then why does he want to punish sin? and uh, so much of anger. Um, so we see here that you know it's not the anger of God, God's anger is always redemptive. We see that he did it out of love. He did not have to do this for us. Uh, you know, he could have let us die in our own sins or he could have wiped out this whole generation. He could have recreated the entire universe uh, again. Uh, but we see God's heart here and his very core of who he is that God is love, 1 John, right? Um, and so he did this all out of love. Can somebody uh, read uh, Romans, uh, three of you can read, one can read Romans 5, 8, and uh, someone else can read 1 John 3, 16, um, and 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. Okay. So can one of you read Romans 5, 8, other... Someone else can read 1 John 3 16 and someone else 2 Corinthians 5 14. Okay. Uh, Romans chapter 5 verses 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Thank you. Here it says that, you know, uh, how did God demonstrate his love for us? That when we were still sinners, you know, there was nothing good in us. Uh, Christ died for us. So there was no reason that he had to die for us. There was no good reason. There was no sufficiently a perfect reason that he had died for uh, had to die for us. There's nothing that he could even see in us or even see in our future. We knew our frailties, our weaknesses, that we are prone to sin, but it was God who demonstrated his love towards us. Okay. 1 John 3:16. John 3:16. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Thank you. So how do we know God's love is because he laid down his life for us. Uh, Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. Can you read that please? Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 14 and 15. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all. Therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them was raised again. 
Thank you. Uh, we'll go for a break now and we'll come back and look at uh, this uh, verse in 2 Corinthians 5. Okay, I'll see you after the break. Thank you.